Hello everyone, uh, we are here for sound experiments. Uh, as you know, in nature uh, there are exact uh, conservation laws uh, such as uh, conservation of energy, conservation of angular momentum, conservation of momentum and conservation of electric charge. So, we are going to demonstrate that linear momentum is conserved in an isolated system. In an, iso in an isolated system, there are no external forces, but there are uh, only internal forces. So, let's start with Newton's second law. The net force acting on a particle is equal to m times the mass of particle times acceleration of that particle and we can write uh, the acceleration of the particle like that the acceleration of particle is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time so we will use this expression in the Newton's second law and we substitute this expression in Newton's second law m times dv over dt and we will we can move uh, the mass of particle the m in inside the derivative so we can write this expression like that dt we can write uh, this expression like that only the m is constant so let me show how i do that dm okay we will use here uh, the chain rule for this derivative so dm over dt plus times v and dv over dt plus no, times m okay uh, m is constant so derivative of m is equal to zero so we only take this term so I showed how I write this expression like this and uh, we called m times v this expression P or momentum okay the net force acting on a particle is equal to let's integrate uh, both sides of this equation over time uh, limits between uh, t1 and t2 Term cancels it, these two terms cancel each other, and dp 
and the limits of the integration is change. And uh, if we think uh, this net force acting on particle is constant, uh, we, the integration becomes And this expression is called impulse momentum theorem. Impulse momentum theorem says that impulse of the net force acting on a particle during this time interval equals the change in momentum of that particle in this time interval. Uh, let's consider two particles uh, with masses M1 and M2 moving with uh, velocities V1 and V2 when we think uh, these two particles collide there will be internal forces uh, that two particles exert each other. So uh, let me show these internal forces. The force exerted by particle 2 on particle 1 is given by like that. And the force exerted by particle 1 on particle 2 is given by like that. From Newton's third law, we know that uh, the forces exerted by these two particles uh, are equal in magnitude uh, but uh, opposite in direction. So uh, we can write these two forces like that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Like that. Now, uh, by using uh, this Newton's second law uh, from here. We start with from here. Is equal to zero. Okay, now, the derivative 
you can write uh, acceleration derivation derivative of velocity with respect to time so as we know before uh, we can move masses inside uh, derivative so we can write again like that and we, we know that this these are momentums As you know, the derivation of a constant is zero, so P1 plus P2 is a constant, is equal to uh, a constant. So, uh, and these two momentum, we, we call that the total momentum. As you can see, the total momentum of the system is constant. So uh, it means that the total momentum of the system does not change in time. OK, uh, now uh, let's uh, write this expression in a different way and equivalently. So uh, delta p is equal to zero final momentum of system is is e uh, minus initial momentum of the system is equal to zero uh, so the final momentum is equal to initial momentum of the system okay uh, initial momentum of the particle of one and initial momentum of particle two is equal to final uh, momentum of particle one plus final momentum of particle 2 okay if the forces between these two particles are conservative uh, there are no mechanical energy gain or lost in this con collision so the kinetic energy of the system is uh, the same after the collision. So this kind of collisions is called elastic collision. So if the collision is elastic and horizontal, we can say that this uh, kinetic energy of the system is conserved. Okay. We can write the initial kinetic energy of the system like that. D 
this is initial kinetic energy of particle one. This is initial kinetic energy of particle two. And we can write the final kinetic energy like that. This is final kinetic energy of particle one, and this is particle uh, final kinetic energy of particle two. First, uh, I will give you a brief information about our experimental setup. First, uh, I will uh, start with air supply. Air supply blows air out of uh, these holes on uh, this air truck to elevate uh, air gliders and uh, minimize the friction between air glider and air truck. And uh, we will use uh, elastic bands. Uh, to give uh, the, a, the gliders push and uh, we will use uh, photogate uh, photogate uh, will be used uh, to uh, measure time that gliders gliders blocks uh, photogate then we will use uh, this kind of uh, pieces of metals uh, to change air glide mass of air gliders. Uh, okay, that's all. Uh, we will increase the mass of these two gliders because uh, the, the glider one uh, is. Uh, 190 grams and the second glider is 200 grams so we will increase these two gliders at the same mass so we will add a uh, first uh, glider 20 grams to increase the 210 grams and uh, we will add uh, the second uh, glider 10 uh, gram, grams so uh, now uh, our gliders have the same same uh, mass and uh, now uh, in first part uh, we will keep the second glider in rest and we will give a push the one glider to collide the second glider. Uh, we will increase the mass of our first glider to 230 grams and uh, we will keep the uh, mass of the second glider the same uh, so we will uh, repeat this process as before Three, two, one. Okay. We will increase the first glider mass of uh, first glider to two hundred and thirty grams, and we will keep uh, the mass of second glider the same and 210 grams and then we repeat the process as before 3 2 1 
3, 2, 1. We have already finished the experiment part of the experiment. First, I am going to show how to find the times that gliders block to photogate after collisions. When first time glider passed the photogate, the number on the screen of the photogate timer is the time that glider blocks photogate before collision. But when we set the photogate timer to read mode, the number on the screen of the photogate timer is equal to the time that glider blocks the photogate before collision plus the time that glider blocks the photogate after collision. So Tf is T total minus Ti. For example, let's find the time after collision of the glider 1 for the third data set. Let's write this equation for the glider 1, T1F is equal to T1 total minus T1I. T1 total is 0 0.6881 seconds minus T1I is Zero point two seven o three seconds. So the time of the collision for the glider one is equal to zero point four one seven eight seconds. Let's find the time after collision for the glider two. Let's write this equation for the glider 2, T2F is equal to T2 total minus T2I, T2 total is 0 0.6513 seconds minus T2I is 0 0.2994 seconds. So the time after collision for the glider 2 is equal to 0 0.3519 seconds as you can remember the first two collision in the experiment glider 2 was in rest so there is no value for the time before collisions After collision, glider 1 was in rest, so there is no value for the time after collisions. L1 is the length of the glider 1 and L2 is the length of the glider 2. The length of each glider is equal to 10 cm. Now we have all values to calculate velocities of colliders, momentums and kinetic energies of the colliders before and after collisions.
velocity and momentum are vector quantities so we took the positive direction to be the left in the experiment By using all equations highlighted in yellow, as you can see, and data taken from the experiment, the values in this table were calculated.